Yo, 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 welcome back to Brandon Smooth, Brandon Smooth TV. Back at you with our show. We back with the dragons. We back with the fire. Fire and desire. We back with House of the Dragons, y'all. Game of Thrones spinoff. Episodes 3 and 4. Now, episode 3 begins, um, of course, the opening shot. And I don't think it's the 100% opening shot, but the first major shot of the episode. We see Damon and Caraxes um, burning shit up. They're just running around getting it in. Um, of course, we know that they're fighting for the Stepstones area, um, and the Crab Feeder is the one trying to take that over. Um, that scene was shot very well. I'm going to keep com commenting on how the dragons look. Um, you know, basically, in compare, in, in, we got to compare it to what we already had. Um, the dragons look better. They actually have colors a little more. And I can kind of see they all have features. So I love uh, Damon's dragon, uh, Caraxes. They call him a blood worm with that long ass neck. That's cool. And then Cyrax, I don't know if it's a female dragon or not, but it seems like almost. If the dragon eggs are in, because they have to put the dragon eggs and you grow up with them, like they put them in your crib as an infant. Um, it seems like they take on some of your personality. So I thought that was dope. Now, we pick up to another time jumping. They're, they're jumping around. They got to get these adult actors and actresses in here. But Viserys' son, Aegon, is too. He's had a son. And people want him named King already. It's crazy. So this whole episode kind of centers around that. Also, um, uh, how Rihanna, or excuse me, Rihanna, Rhaenyra is really de dealing with it because Rhaenyra, she really don't care about having no children or getting married, and she's at the age. And I guess back then they don't really wait too long, obviously, <laughs> because we remember what happened last episode. So since she is at the marrying age, and um, you know she is the king's daughter, so you know I don't think anybody could have got away with it. But if you got eyes like that on you, they they're gonna be pressuring you. So. Jason Lannister, we have our first Lannister, maybe not the first one, but first one with a major speaking role on camera. Um, and this is years, years, years before the Lannisters we know. But um, he tried to holler at uh, Rhaenyra. And he's trying to use his wealth and money to pull her, but she's not really feeling him. You know what I'm saying? He was talking about, you can buy whatever you like. Basically said, you can have whatever you like. Yeah. I built you a dragon pit so nice. You can bring Cyrax to spend the night and you can have whatever you like. I was like, okay. He was trying to trick. He was tricking, tricking. And, of course, she argued with her father about it after that because, of course, she rejected him. At the party, they kind of had a real crazy-ass scene and they were yelling until Otto was like, hey, sire, you know, king, you know, calm that shit down. Because... He's getting pressured, too, probably even more than her. She's just really not having it. Uh, with her, I think her wanting to ascend to the throne, you know, well, not wanting to, actually be a name, the heir, um, currently, she, she's not into other stuff, and she I think she takes her duty seriously, you know what I'm saying, even though she's super, super young. Now, the king basically had a big celebration to celebrate Aegon's second birthday, and I guess they on the go on what's called the king's hunt. Looked like it's in a great area for hunting, um, they call it the King's Woods. Great views. And it's a huge celebration. So I guess they have to kill a huge deer. They're looking for the white heart deer. And that's a, a big ass deer. Of course, all the animals are CGI, but it was all white. They're looking for the rare white deer that, that can get away. So they're killing that um, to celebrate the birthday. Um, what happens is after... Uh, Renair and Viserys get in an argument. She takes off. She takes off into the woods. Super dramatic. On her horse. Uh, Sir Christian follows her. And then they head out. Now, during the time they were out there, she actually got attacked by a big-ass goddamn... This ain't no regular pig. This ain't no three little piggies, okay? She did get attacked by a big-ass boar. And Christian, you know... It knocked him out first, but then he got back up, got his shit together, and it was on top of her and shit, and then he stabbed it. Once he stabbed it, it wasn't over because it kind of fell, but then it got back up trying to attack her again, and she took a hell of anger. She took a dagger out of nowhere and just started stabbing the shit out of him. Um, I'm talking about shh, stabbing the shit out of him. It was crazy. You can tell she had some displaced anger. Um, at a young age seeing that, I'm pretty sure we're going to get some more raw scenes with her in the future, but... We'll have to check that out. Now, 
basically throughout this, since he is looking at his son and got all the Lord's pressure on him and talking about his secession, uh, series is thinking, he's rethinking about why he, you know, named Rhaenyra Queen, Queen of Westeros. Um, he's having doubts. And y'all know he kept talking about that dream. He done brought it up three or four times. He's heavy on prophecies and stuff like that. So I don't know if he would change his mind, but when he dies, and it's inevitable because this fool got wounds every goddamn where, um, it's going to be a problem. That's what the whole show's about, basically. Now, Otto tells Allison that Aegon will be king, period. We already know he had an ulterior art, uh, motive. And we knew that she he was the one that persuaded uh, her to get with the king anyways. So he goes to his daughter, Allison. He said, look, you got to persuade him. You got to lead him down the path that's going to have him rethink um, his decision. Um, also, with the War of Stepping Stones, because they go back and forth when we cut back to them, Viserys actually gets convinced to send Damon and the, um, the, the sea snake, of course, our boy Corliss, some help. Um, and he basically sent a messenger saying, look, we got ships coming, we got people coming, we're going to come help you with this war. Since it's getting out of hand. It's been out of hand, really, because it's been a couple of years while they're fighting. Get out of hand. Um, this is Damon's best episode so far. I don't know if it's, it's probably going to be his best episode, I would say, of the first season, unless something else crazy happened. But so far, um, once the messenger comes, Damon flies in on Caraxes. He's very silent in this episode, too. He didn't say too much. He flies in on Caraxes, gets off. All the dudes look depleted, like the rations is low. Everybody looked like they just, just tired. Man... The messenger come, give him the note. This is from your king, blah, 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 blah. Man, he reads the letter. Takes his helmet and beat the dude senseless, the goddamn messenger. So, in his head, you can tell that he felt like he lost the war. Once he got the message from his brother that they was going to send aid. You know, typically if you win in something and you don't need no aid, we ain't going to waste resources and men sending them. So he felt that way. But early in the episode, they actually had a plan. Because um, the issue is with this war, the crab feeders is in the caves. If they're in the caves, the dragons can't hit them. So what they would do is, of course, they would launch attacks and stuff and try to run up. But they want the dragons to actually be able to get them. Um, this food, Damon goes, rolls a boat by itself. Gets off, takes out a white flag like he surrendered, takes the sword out, hold it up. Next thing you know, you know, the craft leader kind of creep out of the cave and he sends a couple guys, you know what I'm saying, to retrieve his weapon. This fool pulls a dagger or another sword out of somewhere, sliced this fool's belly, and start fighting. He did take out hella dudes. He was just running, taking out dudes. And it looks like he got far enough in to where he got surrounded. Next thing you know, dragons come out of nowhere, start bringing hell and fire. Then he see the crab feeder's bitch ass, um, looks at him, that fool right into the cave. Next thing you know, this fool come out carrying half of the crab feeders, y'all. Like his torso up on some Anakin Skywalker Darth Vader type shit. So this was Damon's best episode. He come out covered in blood and he basically was like, look, we did that. We beat this person. Fast forward to episode four. Episode four. We still got Rhaenyra. Right here in the middle in this picture, because this is her episode. Uh, she's having men basically ask for a hand in marriage, and she's turning them all down. That was um, what's happening. She's not really feeling it. Uh, she has to be courted. You know, she has to be married. She knows it, but she's not. She understands the game of it, and that's the problem. She got a problem with the game, but it is the Game of Thrones. Pun intended. She has a problem with the game as far as people married back then and even had arranged marriages a lot of the time because they was combining the wealth of two families or, you know, they were just doing what's best for both families. Um, you might not have necessarily had wealth, but you had something that was fair exchange, relationships, partnerships, whatever. And that's what they go through in this. So that was crazy. It was uh, one of those suitors because she got a whole lot of dudes and they call up next and it's a little ass boy talking about here, protect her. And if, if he choose her, he would protect her and marry her, right? And it's this dude the whole time cracking on the little boy talking about, basically, you ain't old enough. You ain't going to do shit. Your family ain't shit. You ain't nobody shit. So the little boy pulls the sword out. This was like 12, 13, right? And they start, like, actually fighting. She was like, we got to get out of here. She told the little dude, we got to bounce. And they walking out. 
cut back to the camera, the little boy stabs this fool in the stomach and kills this grown ass man. That boy killed that grown ass dude. You shouldn't have been talking shit. Now, Damon came back super humble. He got his hair goddamn uh, braided into a crown. Well, it looked like, I guess he didn't have his hair, but it wasn't a crown. He had a crown on his head and he comes up, takes the sword out, talking about adding to the goddamn uh, throne. And then he basically said, look, I took out the crab feeder and shit, the sea, the sea snake and other people, they didn't, they didn't name me the king of the goddamn uh, stepstones. And, you know, the series is sitting there looking like, all right, all right, okay. And then, you know, they end up being cool. And the series is soft for his brother. I hope they show some flashbacks. I don't know why, but they do have a lot of history. That's still his little brother. And he came in super humble, y'all. He came in like he was the man. You know, he's about that drama. And he ain't had time to really be waiting on people to do something. He's going to do whatever he can, whatever he can, to try to um, get his position on the Iron Throne. No cap. So, Damon came back all humble, bowed to his brother, you know. But you can tell he running game the whole time. Now, all those ass just sitting over there, you can see him. He just, he just shaking. He was just hating. Just over there, jealous motherfucker. He was just over there like, hmm. I'm mad this motherfucker lives. But they always had a rivalry, so what can you say? Now, Allison... She's trying to be Rhaenyra's friend again. It's a number of years in the past, but you did marry my dad without telling me. And you was my best friend and just had hella babies. So I understand why it took her a while to be cool. But it just seems like they might try to rekindle their friendship. I think it's too late. Because I know they said about mid-season, we're going to get the adult um, the adult transition when the, the younger characters uh, switch actors. So it might be too late. Unless they was friends a little bit before. But we'll see. Now... Allison, she just hate. She's starting not to like Queen. All she do is just lay up in the couch and have babies all day. She got to fuck the uh, king's old, wounded, uh, dripping, just nasty pus body ass. And she's not really feeling that. She's still young. You know what I'm saying? She ain't really got to kick it. She ain't got to go to none of them goddamn balls like that too much and do that little dance with her circle. But she's trying to get it in. She's trying to have a hot girl summer. So she's kind of, you can tell she's rethinking her position. But she got really forced into that shit by her dad. I mean, I'm not saying it wouldn't happen. But I don't think it would have happened as fast, potentially. And the way it is. But she understands that she's securing her power in the future. I don't think she fully understands that. But her dad ought to definitely, definitely have that. So, look, y'all. We know this is Game of Thrones. This is incest. Damon took Rhaenyra to the city. To see the plays and shit on purpose. Kind of see how the people in the city feel about it. They show the scene. They were doing those mock plays they do. Um, especially back then. Talking about the king and who's going to be the heir. Who's going to take over the Iron Throne. Um, Damon stay scheming y'all. He stay scheming. Look at him. Even with a knife to his neck in this picture y'all. This dude stay scheming. Um, Rhaenyra always running off somewhere. So they was together and she runs off. Um, and then he ends up finding her, and they super drunk, y'all. They running around just drinking at every wine little stop they got. Like a food truck is out of, like, Riverfest or something, y'all. Shit, a festival. Um, and then Damon takes his niece to an orgy? And tries to have sex with her? Before she was married? But he couldn't get it up? I don't know if he can get it. That's weird anyway. Look, I don't know. Just He couldn't do it. It seems like... Yeah, he just couldn't do it. Um, before marriage, too. And y'all know she's trying to get courted to marry, so that can mess up a lot of stuff. Um, so she's all hot and bothered, but the, the dumb part is she did get spotted by some spies. So, of course, they're going to report back who they seen down there. But um, she gets back. Sir Christian, you know, he's her knight. Guard her, guard her life. And she, she calls him to the room and gets it in. Um, so she just wanted to have sex with Sir Christian. And she did. Uh, her little dragon was on fire. <laughs> Need to put that on the shirt. Her little dragon was on fire. She had to get it in. And I think she was, you know, might have been first time. So, yeah, she had to go get it in. Now, Otto tells the king basically what happened. And he wasn't technically lying. But, of course, we know he's using this to secure his position. Shit on her. So, his, his grandson can be king. Um, he tells the king. And the king really didn't believe him at first. Um... But while he was telling the king, Allison overheard it and, confr and confronted Rhaenyra. 
She confronted her like outside and said, look, did you lay with your goddamn uncle with y'all at the brothel getting it in? Uh, and she lied. She basically said, no, shit, you know, uh, we didn't do none of that shit. We just got drunk and then he passed out. He was gone. But you know she was lying. They did a little more than that. A lot more than that. Ugh. I can't even believe it. Anyways, I digress on that. Um, yeah. That was just the weird ass scene. But this Game of Thrones, Joe. The Targaryen's been doing that shit for years. Fast forward. The king pulls up, y'all. Look at this picture right here looking like Darth Vader. He was wearing all black. He had to make sure he had the black on. And he came to confront Damon. Uh, about what happened with his daughter and he's finally seeing what's going on so he put the um the knife to his neck as you see and he banned him again but you didn't already ban this fool once it's like it didn't work the first time he showed back up and started some old shit you might need a punishment that's more severe but it's not really in the series the series he'd be trying not to do shit he'd be turning up when he need to and this was the scene he turned up so told damon to basically leave forever but you know he gonna be back anyways the king says that Rhaenyra got to get married after this. After her little stunt she pulled, she said it's over. And, and she's going to marry uh, Leonor, Leonor? Uh, Corlys' his son, the sea snake's son. It is what it is. They're going to unite the two powerful families. Uh, and boom, bam, bam. And then she said, okay, I'm going to hold up my end of the duty. She fin finally, after all these years and all these motherfuckers she just seen, she finally said, cool. But she said, you got to get rid of Otto. That motherfucker's a snake. And what did the series do? He went and fired Otto. Now he got another enemy, and he got an enemy that was close to you and know a lot of shit. Uh, fires him. And then the episode ended with um, King Viserys giving Rhaenyra some plan BT. <laughs> this episode was weird. It had some good parts, it had some bad parts. It seemed like a bridge episode to me to episode five. Um, not the best episode, um, but I did enjoy three. That was Damon's best episode. A lot of people's character we love to hate. He's a weird, nasty motherfucker. Well, it was custom back then. Whatever. Um, Rhaenyra just got the hot twat, man. She's just running around getting it in. Um, and then Viserys did kind of step it up this year. Uh, this Not this year, this episode. He got it in. So I'm kind of proud of him uh, for turning up on his brother. But yeah, the punishment should have been way more severe. And then will his plan BT from back in the day work? We'll find out next episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.